Welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, uh, welcome to a little update on uh, the LibreOffice WebAssembly story. Um, we um, kind of perhaps over ambitiously promised LibreOffice in the browser live and in color today. There will be some colors um, <laughs> on the slides. <laughs> They're still not um, a, a very demoable version from, um, from the WebAssembly port, just to get expectations right here. Um, we're sorry for that. It turns out to be quite a massive moonshot, um, but at least we will give you some updates um, on where we are, what we achieved, uh, what we're planning to do, um, and some updated timeline. I'm here uh, with Jan Marek, who's been doing the, the bulk of the work um, um, of that porting, really. Um, so in a moment, I will just hand over to him uh, to update you um, on what was going on. Um, I was also um, doing a bit of work here um, and some hacking, but he really, um, he and Armin, who unfortunately can't be here today, did the bulk of the work. First of all, um, what this is all about. So um, LibreOffice WebAssembly is an attempt to get LibreOffice running natively in the browser. So which means compile it down to WebAssembly, um, which is a um, very special um, um, binary format that runs natively in the browser, not like JavaScript, but um, very similar um, from, from a um, high level point of view. Um, there's a number of reasons why we think that is, that is important. Um, we gave some, uh, we, we, we pitched that last year on the, for the LibreOffice conference. We gave an update um, uh, at FOSTEM this year. Um, it's, it's a very nice complement, we believe, um, to other solutions um, beyond the fact, obviously, we, we believe that the browser as a platform um, is very, very interesting and it's a very good way to reach vast numbers of users without having to, to port to any native, um, their native, um, whatever they're running devices. Um, so we further think that the time is ripe for that. Um, we've seen a number of high profile ports um, for, for into WebAssembly in the last year or two. For example, AutoCAD have, have ported their engine um, natively. Um, there's a ton of smaller projects, many of them open source, um, for example, for encryption or other stuff that you really would like to run as close as possible to uh, where your user and your data is. Um, so, and there's been uh, quite some nice improvements. So, so we, we still do believe, although we did hit uh, the outsized number of problems, um, particularly with the tool chain, we still believe um, that this is the right time to do that. And in general, that things are there available um, and ready. Uh, we're very grateful. This project is um, funded by an LNET. Um, thanks for that, um, who in turn are funded by EU Horizon um, a project. Um, yeah, so thanks to an LNET foundation um, for helping us out here. Um, let me now hand over to Jan Marek uh, for a quick update on where we are, what are the challenges and what's coming. So, yeah, as you can see, that's basically our links from last year. They're still more or less up to date. We just pushed a few updates in the last days during the conference to that branch. You can still build uh, LibreOffice Vasm completely and it will finish the build, but yeah, you will have runtime problems. As you can see also on the slides, uh, you have uh, little projects progress since FOSTEM, like because of the problems from, from the size of LibreOffice linking and building the stuff in Vasm, uh, we decided to, uh, to go to uh, yeah, turn a uh, roundabout uh, to do a really static li Linux build, which is basically the whole strip down of the Vasm build 
but the better debugging and uh, runtime environment. And that is also working in the branch. So you can build a single S office binary and it will run without any other uh, dynamic linking. Uh, there are already quite a few changes to accomplish that in master, but uh, more stuff is pending still. It's, it's still a lot of stuff to clean up. We will hope we can push more stuff in the next time. Well, we, we did quite some some changes, like um, you've seen some some configury changes and also part of the, the static um, Boston, build stuff. The slides don't seem to be updated. I thought it was on my side, but it's your fault, seems to be like the chat is wrong. I mean. so, what's the, the, the current slide? Is the current WASM status? I see that now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, great. We didn't. Okay. So, so, so let's hope it's, uh, it's holding up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So right. So so more broadly. So if you look at uh, my commits and Jan Marek's commits and master, um, that's mm, probably the majority of, of the changes since since February are related to the to the Vasm project. Um, there's also quite quite some um, um, stripping down changes from ARM in there um, just to to get let's say. Um, um, to, to slim the, 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 the um, to slim it down and just use basic writer. Um, part of that is also already in master, not everything. The ongoing development, um, as you see on the slide, is indeed so that's the latest and greatest with the last the latest changes from yesterday, the feature uh, wasm branch. My slides are again stuck. <laughs> It seems that you have some internet connection problem. And in the Jitsi, Jitsi um, there I can see only Dennis um, event uh, listing and not the slides ever. Okay. Uh -huh. Just to mention it. Try to reshare. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Okay, so so I thought the theory is that um, if we if we keep talking here, that it would um, then show the slides or the screen share, uh, which, which is not the case. Can can you see us um, our moving hats yeah. in the video? Yeah. Now, yes, now I see you perfectly. Okay. Maybe, maybe you. we need to, we need to bounce up and down a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop bouncing. Sorry, continue. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fast yeah. Let's try. Okay, even with the stuff in the programs, uh, just to have a reminder, what we originally had planned is that the VCL demo would be running and we would have Qt5 at the main Wasm backend and doing some probably end to end encrypted communication between two uh, LibreOffice versions. Um, yeah. That was a little bit over optimistic. We didn't expect that many problems already in the tool chain. So, yeah, with that, we are going to what, uh, what and why the Linux static build. Uh, first thing is um, the development itself is quite hard, hard still with Wasm. Uh, we had really long link times and something like 30 minutes for linking the file of the uh, binary uh, for normal setups with less than 64 gigabyte of RAM. It wouldn't link at all and would run out of memory. I think it was actually killing your box even with 64 gigabyte because actually your operating system needs a bit of space. And <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Was, so was that was effective. definitely an environment you do not want, you couldn't, uh, and do any native development in, in the browser. So we said, okay, well, while we have those uh, general problems, how can we continue uh, on from another angel? And that's why we decided to go via C++ static build. And that is actually working. And you have those GDB and can really debug stuff that is broken. Uh, we patched a few stuff there based on the iOS and Android uh, 
static builds so that all the static build components are linked in currently that is uh, something you had to manage manually but uh, without changes you simply can build all the components and they are linked in automatically and the correct uh, lookup maps are generated and it's even awesome. um, that's even better than the um, than than the, the the Android and iOS build because they had like manual list like a hand uh, uh, um, maintained manually maintained list of components that you need to link and and the the, the Linux static build is now um, kind of self determining what, what what dependencies it needs um, and um, yeah and and again the reason why 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 we wanted that or we needed that is it's kind of simulating it's like the gtk viewer simulating um uh, online and tiled rendering or or the android the android viewer it's like simulating the environment that we have in in, in wasm like everything linked into one static um binary so we, we were much faster um for example for the stripping down because we didn't need to wait uh, half an hour to an hour and need needing massive amounts of RAM um, for the for the development cycle. Thorsten, please turn off the webcam. It should be stable, more stable then. Let's do that. And then um, once we're showing slides, you can switch it back on and uh, chat a bit. <laughs> See you then. Okay, hopefully better now. Yeah, at least the slides are really um, high resolution. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, just over the last half a year, basically, the uh, development experience has quite improved. Normally, uh, the default uh, mscripten version used for Qt or uh, is some old one, one point something version. But uh, the improvements on all the uh, sides were so uh, enormous that we decided to ignore that and go to something newer. Actually, I'm currently using 2.29, which is the current release, which means that those uh, 30 minutes link times get down to something like a minute. It means that uh, the massive gigabyte of RAM is not any problem anymore because now it doesn't exceed uh, something like three gigabyte. And uh, even much, uh, even more important is, or well, probably not more important, is that now you have uh, dwarf information directly from CLang in the bottom uh, binaries, and you can actually work and debug with those dwarf information inside Chrome, which before was just basically decompiling the wasm into some kind of wasm assembler. And then you could try to understand that stuff. And it was hard. So from that side, uh, you can see that as, as much as we thought, OK, wasm is now five years old, stuff should work. Yeah, it still <laughs> improves on a lot of times. And if you I just recently had looked for some stuff with two or three year old Wasm this uh, assembly code to recompile that and the assembler gave uh, errors. So it's still a moving target, but stuff massively improved in the last uh, half a year. Maybe just um, just one one uh, one anecdote here. Um, what, what kind of uh, so it's like you, you know this. Um, this um, breaking your tool chain since 1989. So I think some some uh, one of our project members once did a T-shirt for that, and it's it's really true. Um, so so with LibreOffice, we're really hitting all the problems. Um, the the good news is that um, the the, the mscripten tool chain is 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 improving. Um, they're taking feedback and they're taking it serious, and also on the browser side. But yeah, but the, the anecdote I was, was about to say is like, if you want to debug LibreOffice, like with source level debugging, you probably need to, as of today, still compile your own browser uh, because there's a built-in limit of, I think, 1 million um, lines. Uh, beyond that, they will just give up and not show you any um, uh, any line-by-line -line source level info. Um, yeah. So so I, think, I, I still believe it was worth uh, doing the static uh, Definitely. The static native build. So
so yeah the next thing is uh, it's going to uh, still open problems we are facing one thing is uh, bridges and the uno mappings to really get over uh, the bootstrapping and start the stuff it's not 100 percent sure if we can really in implement a bridge or can it's better to work around it there are some ideas but yeah it's not really it's uh, essentially the, the same fine idea. It's essentially the same yeah. problem that that the iOS um, um, and, and like the, first the Android port and then the iOS ports were facing. That the um, the the Uno bridges are kind of extra difficult code. They they have that sometimes it's self um, modifying code. Sometimes it's code that's generated on the fly. So you, you have code that generates assembler code. And then jumps on the self-generated code and and does something magic and on pla on many platforms you can do that if you know what you're doing you need to hack some assembler on some platforms like ios you just can't have have self-modifying binaries for security reasons so um and actually my conviction is that for for something that is not that does not need any remote um connections or has no built-in java or or python that needs to dynamically call stuff you really don't need this this bridge thing um it's just that it's um the 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 number of ties it has into into all over the source code is, is quite quite large so we're still trying to work around um, that it's it's on the stack, perhaps something to do later to write out the bridge for, for that sort of like iOS and, and WebAssembly and Android to write, write out the bridge entirely. We will see. For, for the while, we're trying to, to do what uh, the iOS port is did and just have a minimally, no, not, not a working bridge, but a fake bridge that does enough uh, to survive um, until the document, the first document's loading. So yeah, the second thing is uh, something like purge some part of a file system image. I mean, we are already generating a file system image to get all the con standard configuration files into the WASM environment. We are not yet sure what way to go to make persistent writing stuff from a user's point of view uh, usable. I'm not sure we need to go there. Currently, the Libra of the startup is first startup is to start LibreOffice, generate a user project uh, profile and LibreOffice and start LibreOffice again. Obviously, that's not really possible in the browser, which would mean if you end LibreOffice or the WASM file, the image will be gone and you start from, uh, from the beginning. So in end this loop, we will see how that is going there. I mean, generally, there's still some GBuild uh, stuff and we need to update it when we rebase it. But most of the stuff is just working. Just if there are larger things, we need to rebuild the stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. And and of course, upstream, like merge that um, into master so, so that that's still um, so, so the status on the branch. So my, my gut feeling is that GBuild is, is mostly good there. Just probably need some some cleanup and some and then like properly merging that um, into master um right in terms of um setup there so we're still struggling a bit with um with m scripting because it turned out that um depending on when and on which um time of the day, phase of the moon, and um, Linux version we were uh, installing mscripten, you will get subtly different either um, despite the fact that you were uh, kind of checking out a very specific version, you were still getting uh, subtly different local setups because of the Node.js um, crap that this is pulling. Um, so so we, had, um, we had Docker images for building. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's the right approach because then then you have all kinds of funny funny issues with um, with the Strut environment and then being able to or not being able to to debug that because the the, the file mapping is different. But what do you think is that that's something that has stabilized as well or? No idea. 
I'm still building mm -hmm. without a root environment. The good thing is that the current status of uh, the static build is that it really doesn't need any static, uh, any local libraries completely now. So you can, like a Windows build, you can build everything in. And the only thing you basically need on your system is the compiler. Everything else is downloaded, compiled, and linked locally. So I do not re even use the change root environment for the static build anymore. It works without. Mm. So that's maybe that's the most uh, the best way to go for that problem, mm. just to not depend on anything else than the compiler. We will see. Yeah, like all but the time. It, but it does seem to it does seem to settle change. down there. I'm like I'm um, stabilizing um, whether by sheer luck or by having G build now yeah. properly fixed. I don't know. Maybe we will build something with Maison next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the stuff is there. It can build writer, but that's a different problem. So this is kind of the updated project plan and timeline. So we still think VCL demo <laughs> will run soon. Let's yeah. see if we are, our predictions are now better than the last time. Yeah, we're spending the better part of the night trying to get this um, going. And I actually, I got it much further, but you know, that's, there's always this, uh, you only see the, the next door uh, after you open this door. So that's, there's always another room. So it's a bit hard to, to predict, but when we're, we're kind of going through the VCL um, in it, like the, the bootstrap code, like line by line, and we're almost at the end. So um, with a bit of more focused work and another night shift or two, the hope is that really we, we have that. Um, mm -hmm. And we will let you know by uh, social media then. <laughs> <laughs> On Tuesday, yes? OK. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then um, I mean, the, the current build is still big, even with strip down or something like that. If you have a VASM uh, build with debugging information, you still get a one gig gigabyte binary. If you don't build with uh, uh, debug information and optimized build, it's still 100 megabytes. So there is still quite some part of improvements to do there. Basically, a lot will be switching on to internal browser RPs, which provide the same uh, um, the same tools and calls like ICU and NSS. So we do not have to compile them ourselves. We, we did some, Armin did some nice um, analysis there, like, um, the, the, and there's some, um, you remember that those, the, the, the tools we were using this, um, this blow T from, yeah. um, that from Google? I think so. Yeah. So we were just, just counting, like checking the binary size and then mapping, um, to modules where, where the, where the bloat comes from. Um, and unfortunately quite a large, um, a uh, bit there is, is some something like like ICU Data that tables. is hard to yeah that that's hard to get out if you if you really want to be able to load OEF documents. Um, but the good news is that browsers have the same kind of, kind of API. I mean they, they even bundle ICU I, I believe. So then instead like instead of shipping another ICU, just use the browser API. That will be the the plan. But we're not there yet. Yeah. Another thing is still that uh, we have Qt5 at the main backend that's working, but Qt5 also has its own ICU library. So yeah, probably also duplicated codes there, but that is generally working on also Qt5 is used that in the static build to start right and it's working there. And yeah, last line is basically yours. I'm not that optimistic that end-to-end -end <laughs> encryption will be working next spring, but yeah, Fostem yeah. is there. We have some target yeah. timeline and right. we will so see. So we have, we have, we have, um, we have we, we, um, again, thanks to Nlnet to be um, very understanding there um, that, that this is a kind of interesting, very important, but also very challenging project. And they gave us some some extension until um, early next year. Um, so we're still funded by then and we will continue fighting, um, fighting. and uh, hopefully succeeding. Um, yeah, so I think this this end of the year to get some, some visible demo that is 
that is achievable. We will see then um, what to prioritize, whether we go for smaller size or whether we go for something like end-to-end -end encryption. Um, but yeah. I'm, I, I, so, so, so far, um, there were massive challenges, but most of those challenges, well, well half of that, those challenges were like the build system. And um, Jan and I kind of um, struggled with that and um, in the end um, uh, won and, and, and got it going. And the other bit was the, 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 the MScript and WebAssembly ecosystem. And I also nicely, um, without us doing much, um, solved improved. those issues and improved that massively. So right now, I mean, the, the way things are going is still very, very positive. So I'm, I'm enthusiastic and I'm, I'm also positive that. I mean, we are not giving up. We are still uh, hoping everything will yeah, work no, out and we there's, no, there's only onwards, there's <laughs> no giving up. <laughs> okay, so um, to just to leave a bit of time for questions, um, I think we have like uh, some three, three minutes, minutes left. Time. So we would um, um, like to thank you for your attention. We'd like to thank NLNet um, and EU for funding this or co-funding this. And we did now switch off the screen sharing and switch on the camera so you, you can ask us questions. <laughs> Maybe we should. <laughs> Let me try. Uh, there we go. Yeah, at least. And ah, Heiko asks, how about QT6? <laughs> Uh, QT6, uh, that's a good question because uh, Michael Wekon from the city of Munich, he tried to build the QT5 backend with QT6 yesterday or a few days ago, and he basically wrote on ILC, it just works. There may be some problems and improvements needed, but from the, you can build with QT6 and it will start LibreOffice and there was no obviously broken stuff. So. And now you tell me we should have switched to QT6 immediately. Yeah. We would have had a demo today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see like the, the, the back end, like the how to, how to render in, in, in the browser. That's often a question. Um, so, so one man was, was there to use file rendering in slash team um, that, that kind of provides already uh, quite a lot of shrink wrapping that we would need, but but Qt is also interesting because they also have since quite some time they have native uh, WebAssembly support. We will see. But whatever is easiest, then I suspect the the version. <laughs>